What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel again. I am Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service Repair. All right, so on this one here on the 18 models, they actually started uh, putting uh, kill switches on the battery, uh, on off switches. So that's been helped this thing tremendously. It's got a switch on the side. Some other issues they've had in the past, let's just bring you guys up here a little closer. So other issues they've had in the past is that the wireless winch controls right here and here were wired hot all the time and that would slowly drain your battery. Um, here's your regulator rectifier. That is your ECU. There's some more relays over here. And then this guy right here, this is, there's a couple different styles of these, depending if you have an 800 or a 1000, and there's a couple different styles. This is your reverse speed controller. Um, if you're having issues, um, a lot of small uh, electronics are grounded inside of this thing. So I'm not exactly sure if there's a way to check it. I know some guys have looked into it, but I have just replaced them in the past and has cured some of my issues. There is also a black nine pin that runs from the upper wiring harness to the motor wiring harness and uh, those get corroded uh, and start to short out and blow fuses. So, uh, and also back underneath here, if you dig underneath here, you'll find your DTC or your uh, OBD2 connector for this thing. I'll grab my uh, OBD2 machine right now and show you what I have there. You guys probably seen it in some of my other videos and I got it through Massimo. Uh, I'll show you the part number and I'll post a link down below. And anything I use on this machine, uh, I will post links down below. Go. All right, you guys seen this in previous videos. Again, I bought this through Massimo. Um, part number 6709, it's an EFI diagnostic tool. Um, you can just kind of search the internet and it, I finally came up with the part number and it took me to Massimo and I bought it for right around 300 bucks. Um, it works on a lot of your, on your older odes, it is a different style connector. Um, some of the pins are in different spots. So basically I just copied what the new style is and it actually works. So you have your OBD2 scanner and it comes with this little nine pin or this, this pin connector here. And then you have your six pin connector, but there's actually only three. Um, I wish I could remember off the top of my head what was power, what wasn't. Uh, but anyways, so we'll go ahead and we'll connect it like this here. We'll go ahead and turn the battery on here. We're gonna go ahead, pop this cover off. Let's plug in to see if we got any DTCs in this machine at all. I'll go turn the key on to power up the ECU. All right, so now ECU's powered up. We'll go over here to the motor OBD2. We'll enter that. It is a Delphi system. Hit that, and now we're entering it. We can read codes. And this is a very common one for the instrument cluster. Um, with the with the Zeus. I find this all the time with the Zeus, the MIL circuit malfunction. I mean, you can clear that out, but it's a guarantee it's going to come right back. I have, we'll go ahead and do all this. Yep, we're good there. And continue. So those are the only ones we have. Now we can go to data stream, click on that. For the supported data, you can see engine speed, throttle position sensor, um, and your map and all that stuff. And you can just keep going and going. Um, but I also have a spec sheet for different stuff too to tell you what spec should be. You can see the battery has 12.1 volts in it, um, map altitude, volume efficiencies, map multipliers. Your command AFR right now is 4.97 AFR. Target AFI is 4.97 without it running. Uh, we'll just kind of, I'm just going to show you all the parameters on this you can read. Now, a lot of stuff you can find your pump duty cycle your fuel post width, um, let's see, your, uh, let's see, did, 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 where I'm looking for it here, desired idle, of course, it tells you how, if you're how far out you are, uh, there's your stepper motor, desired steps, that's your IEC motor in this thing, those things go bad constantly when they get full of debris, 100, looking for 165, I believe that's correct on not starting, no codes, no seconds of runtime. Spark dwell time and all this other wonderful stuff that most of you guys don't care about. But you also have your O2 voltages you can look at, make sure that's correct, your millivolts, map read angle sensors. Um, let's see, and more your second O2 and your engine runtime. So you have all that stuff you could check out on here. 
Um, like I said, I have a schematic, a sheet that tells me what all the stuff should be in at idle and all that. But like I said, there is no, I did not find any, any codes. Let's pop back up here. So if we read again, and now this ECU has no faults. So, um, let's see while we're underneath the hood. Let's see. Let's see. I know these things have a huge overheating issue. Get this out of the way. Uh, they've had overheating issues. Make sure your fans are come on. A lot of times I will find that the thermal switch goes bad. Uh, where is it at on this thing? It's around here somewhere. This guy will go bad on the, on the fans, on the fans. Um, I've had the computers go out before for the electronic power steering, but most of the time I run across this motor going bad. Uh, they'll, they used to send the whole entire thing, but I would just pull, I just pull the motor off. They put the motor back on and I haven't had any issues with that. Um, make sure your stays clean up here. But I also have a little tool here, um, the radiator kits you can buy, the, the jugs and stuff you put on there. And I'll let this thing idle for a long time. And I've gotten air out of these things quite a bit. I mean, quite a, quite a bit for a long time. It just bubbles and bubbles and bubbles. And I just let it do its thing. I think I've let them idle for like 45 minutes and finally had no, no more air bubbles come out. Um, this is a new style. Uh, they had the old style uh, brake masters that really sucked. This is the newer style. They may have updated it since then. I haven't, like I said, I haven't worked on a lot of the newer ones in a while. Uh, so that's a new style. Brake fluids. Coolant should be changed uh, about every two years. Same thing with brake fluids should be changed every two years. Um, they have issues with the brake squeaking. A lot of times you can take the brake pads out, resurface those on some sandpaper, get rid of that. Ball joints go bad on these things quite a bit. So do wheel bearings. Um, Scooter Power Sports, I think it's the name of that, what Scott has, sells aftermarket ball joints and uh, wheel bearings. I recommend those, they're a lot nicer. Um, this is your GPS, if you have the Zeus. Let's see, this is probably the most useless thing I've ever seen on one of these, when you can just lean it back against the back like that. Um, all your relays and fuses right through here, you can check all that stuff out, make sure that's all right. Um, your winker relay right there. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, the uh, Sardis solenoids and some of these just go out on a constant basis. So they've updated them multiple times. This unit here, I think it doesn't even have, has like 48 hours on it right now. So we have these that cause issues. The um, rubber straps break. When it comes to the heated seats, you have a high and low. Well, we all know that. If you want high, it's either gonna heat the back or the butt, depending on which plug you put in, which connector. You put it on low, it's gonna heat either the back or the butt, depending on which connector you put it in. It doesn't do both. A lot of guys ask about speakers and stuff for these things. You're better off running a, uh, your own Bluetooth, because you do have what's called the ICE system to put in here. Let's see if I can get inside here. That's settings, and then we need to go system info. And there's a software update to plug into this thing through USB that's out front if it hasn't ever been updated. Trying to find, oh, dealer settings. Dealer, um, what was it? Was it 9999? Nine, nine, nine? I cannot remember. Let's see. For some reason, it's not letting me. I can't remember what the dealer settings were. It's been a long time, but anyways, to activate the ICE system for this thing, you have to put go in the dealer settings, press in the code, and uh, it'll let you add the ICE, but the ICE is like $1,000. It's worthless. I know you guys see the little Bluetooth thing up here and all that. It's it's worthless. Uh, just get your own get your own uh, wireless wet sound bar, so whatever you guys are happy with. Um, let's see. Push buttons go out all the time in these things. Brake switches go out. Um, yeah, so I mean, the dump bed things go out, differentials break. Uh, so when it comes to differential fluids, uh, transmission fluids, uh, they used to be like an 80 weight in these and they had updated that to a full synthetic 75-140 in the front rear diff and transmission. Uh, these things came stock with Royal Purple. Not a huge fan, huge, 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 huge fan of Royal Purple because um, as it heats up, it gets hot, it actually, kind of starts to break down and, and uh, runs really slow. So uh, a nice Amsoil, um, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Motul fan. I love Motul. Uh, Motul, and I believe these motors take like 2.1, 2.3 quarts. I'll have to double check. Like I said, it's been a long time on that. Uh, oh yeah, let me show you this guys. I, I did this, wow, I did this a long time ago. 
Um, these things had a heat problem uh, in that center console getting hot. So I bought some acoustic barrier uh, sound deadening heat mat and just put it all over the inside of this thing. Um, this thing has not probably been off since it was bought. Because when we got them, I installed all this stuff. So you can see what we did there to kind of help with that heat. Um, so let's get back in here to the cab and take a look what we got going on here. There's the intake for the air. Here's your uh, front cylinder coil, rear cylinder coil there. And over here, very easy to get to. Um, all the way down here, got your gear position, what they call an angle rotation sensor. That'll show your gear positions. Um, this here is your cam trigger, uh, or not cam trigger, crank trigger. Basically tells, it, tells your ECU when to tell the uh, coils to fire off on what cylinder. The so, oil filter is on the front right down here with three 8 mil head 6x10 bolts. Um, let's see here, what else can we talk about? There's your injectors front, rear, uh, IEC motor. They've gone out, I've replaced these when they never want to idle ride or anything like that. Your IEC motor has a lot to do with that. Your TPS sensor here, you saw mine was reading zero, which is good. Um, definitely check your intake tracks, make sure these aren't cracked in any way. Uh, another big issue you guys have is on the other side is with the uh, PVC valve on these things. They're really, really cheap. They're plastic. You may not be able to see that. You can see the Y. We could bypass that and just put a Y in it. Um, and that takes care of that PVC problem. Now, another thing you run across, I'm gonna have to look at this because it looks like one of the wires may be coming out of here. Sorry, I didn't get a good angle. The, here is your um, uh, st uh, stator connector right here. So what charges charges everything? You can see right here though, they got it's gotten thicker wire here and over here. They used to come really really thin, and these things the Mossimos will have an issue. They come really really thin on this side, and they would burn up before they got to the uh, up to the rectifier, um, causing issues. You know, making them. Uh, burn up the plugs will be all melted so a lot of guys will just hardwire it with the right size gauge wire and it runs all the way up now to get to your clutches this is a fun part to get to your clutches you have to come in here you have to take this cover off with the all these screws uh pull, pull your mat up take a few off down here we'll take this off you take this cross member off here you also take your uh e-brake loose you'll take this cross member off here and then that'll give you access to that clutch cover. Um, you're gonna need like, a, if you go from the side, you're gonna need an extended uh, swivel 10 millimeter to hit all those bolts, and then you'll have access to that. A lot of guys go under, drop the skid plate, and access the lower bolts uh, easier that way, but it's a lot of work getting the skid plate off and on too. It's a pain in the butt to change a belt in the field. It's almost, almost impossible unless you have all the tools with you. It's 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter, then you need to uh, take the cover off with 10 millimeters. Uh, and then you need to have a, what is that? I forget the bolt size. It's like, I think it might be eight millimeter by one, two, five thread pitch bolt to spread the secondary clutch apart. And hopefully you didn't burn up your primary clutch because the tread blocks get hot and melt in these things. So, anyway. so we've been talking about different problems that these uh, machines have a little bit as I'm going through doing the service for this thing. Um, I forgot to mention that I believe 17 was the biggest culprit that the, uh, on one of the pinion gears in the transmission, it would rub against the sidewall of the transmission housing and actually back a nut off and push a hole through it, push a hole into your uh, CVT cover. And I've actually seen parts of that make the clutch explode into pieces and blow the clutch out through the cover, through the front, down on the floor, or out here underneath the seat. I see some crazy things like that happen. Uh, big issue with that. So in 18, they were supposed to address that. So they said by milling it a little bit deeper. Um, guys run into a lot of problems with the CV boots on here. They're just really, really hard. Um, I've seen them start to fold in on themselves and come off. Uh, you can get, uh, was it All Ball sells them. So does uh, the Fast Boot. Uh, pretty simple fix there. Um, people talk about, the, especially on the four doors, 
that these things get extremely, extremely hot. That's because this cat's up in here and that's really right underneath your passenger compartment. Um, uh, it makes it crazy, crazy hot. Uh, a lot of guys delete that run straight pipe through there. Uh, kind of hard to see from the angle I got. Those get crazy, crazy hot. A lot of guys will wrap their exhaust issues with wrapping the exhaust. Yes, it does knock the heat down, but it can cause uh, premature uh, wear and erosion on your pipes. Um, let's see what other issues do we have on these things? They have quite a few different issues. It's just been so long since I've had to deal with uh, working on some of these, but those are some of the most common issues I run across. Like I said, to start a solenoid, to reverse speed controller, CV boots, no starts, push buttons, brake switches, uh, fuel pumps, um, valve clearances, especially um, gear position sensors or rotation angle sensors, the 800, 1000 are different. Um, transmission problems, the oil, they differential problems. Uh, if you guys read your owner's manual, it will tell you that when you're in four wheel drive, this is per odes back um, a few years back now, you're not supposed to go over 30 miles an hour in four wheel drive. That causes these things to blow apart. Also, they changed the differential fluids and transmission fluids to a 75 140 from like, a, I think it was a 90 weight or something like that. Um, so that's been changed, which has made a big difference on wearability uh, in a lot of those issues. Um, and run, run a good high quality oil in the motor. I'm not a fan of Royal Purple, AMS oil. Uh, I really like AMS oil a lot. Uh, I really like Motul, I'm a huge Motul fan. It calls for a 1040. Uh, that's what they run Royal Purple Full Synthetic. Um, so your choice in the oils, whatever you prefer, go for it. Um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, just make sure you keep your machine clean. So we'll just proceed on. I'm just kind of rambling on here with different things. So, uh, and I also went over a few things that are common issues on all the odes, uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, 2013, 14, 15 on up to almost present day, they fixed a couple smaller issues. Um, but again, uh, you guys got any questions about this at all? Uh, you know, be sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, find me on Facebook at Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair, or you can even find me, uh, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, at limitlesspowersports78 gmail.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Just give me a little time to uh, get back to you. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, their comments doesn't show up right away. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, and I try to get back to everybody that leaves a comment or a question on there. Uh, again, guys, I, I thank you for the continued support. And if you guys haven't hit that like and subscribe button and turn on post notifications, guys, I'd really appreciate that because I think it's like 95 or 96.5% of people that watch my content are not subscribed to my channel. And man, it doesn't cost you a dime to subscribe, man. It really helps us content creators out uh you know we spend a lot of time doing this ourselves trying to make it uh legible for you guys and you know enjoy the videos and stuff like that again guys thank you for the continued support and uh, i'll catch you on the next upload